Hi. If you're listening to the Amp Hour a, couple, oh, a week or two back, Chris Gamble and I kind of goofed things up with some terminology to do with electric cars. I blame Chris, but eh, anyway, I was talking about on the Amp Hour the Mitsubishi i Miev, uh, uh, electric car, and, well, through the magic of the EEV block, snap my fingers, I've got one here in the lab. Really, it's here. Check it out. Ta-da! The Mitsubishi IMEF, complete with Malcolm Fade. And you might know Malcolm from Silicon Chip. That's his electric, there's his face on the front, there's his fully three-phase electric ute that he uh, got published. Tell us about the ute. How, how old is it? How did it come about? Okay, well it came about when uh, fuel prices were getting toward $2 a litre. <clears throat> um, back about three years ago now. I started planning, designing, and thinking there must be a better way. Started going to the Australian Electric Vehicle Association mm -hmm. meetings and uh, searching and scouring the internet for ideas. Um, and uh, the uh, ideas just built up on how best to how best to do the job. Found the Ute. Yep. Found an old three-phase motor. Actually, the motor was the first thing I found at a right. um, at a surplus yard. Awesome. Um, the inverter, the thing that converts DC yeah. to three-phase AC from eBay, as all good things come. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> Where from? Is it a China thing or did you get it from the US? Or? Uh, the inverter is a brand called Danfoss, which right. is, I think is European. But, uh, well, eBay from, oh, it came locally, I think, from um, Tasmania. Okay, interesting. Anyway, just showed up on a pallet one day. Excellent. Um, batteries came from China. Uh, I imported a pallet load. It was uh, much cheaper mm -hmm. than doing it any other way. And they served me well, almost two years. Excellent. Is it, is it still going, the ute, or you uh, have to replace the batteries? Or? The ute I have actually sold. Oh, you sold it? Yes, oh. about six weeks ago I sold it to a gentleman in Perth. Yeah. who's going to revive new life into it. Fantastic. Um, the batteries were on their way out. Um, Lead-acid batteries have a useful life of about two years in a car, just because yep. the, right. the um, application in a car is exactly not what they like. Right. <laughs> um, he's going to put some nickel metal hydride batteries into it yep. from uh, Vectrex Electric Motorcycles. Ah, yes, of course. Yes. They, you can buy those in Australia now, can't you? Um, not anymore. The, oh, really? The They're parent just... company went bankrupt in the US. A fantastic bike. In fact, I do repairs on them. Excellent. Um, I repair the battery packs. Uh, they have a, about mm. 102 cells, yep. uh, 50, sorry, 102, 30 amp hour nickel metal hydride cells, 1.2 volts each, mm -hmm. and uh, single cells go faulty, either go, yep. um, they start leaking their fluid. Okay, so you take it about, near part, you repack them, new yeah. cells? Exactly. Um, yeah, usually one yep. cell, two cells. And the how do you do with load, cells. how do you, does, it lo does load balancing matter if you can replace one, you know, if it's an almost worn out pack and you only replace a couple of cells, is that... Yeah, Not that's so um, much a good thing to do. It is a um, a tricky thing to do. What uh, what I have to do is level the voltages on the old batteries and the new batteries. Right. Um, nickel metal hydride has a fairly flat discharge yeah. curve, but um, I can balance the voltage within a few uh, few millivolts. Okay. That's usually close enough. Yep. Um, once the battery does a once the bike does a charge cycle. Yep. Um, it's all nickel metal hydride batteries self balance sweet. through yep. self heating, okay. so they nice. work themselves out. Excellent. And the Mitsubishi IMEF, yes. what does it use? It uses pack? lithium ion batteries. Just standard lithium ion technology or is it some weird... It's nothing too weird. I think right. every manufacturer has their own secret ingredients. Yep. Um, the, these ones are 50 amp hour mm -hmm. and there is about 82 of them, totaling about 320 volt pack. Nice. So. And we're going to take it outside and check it out. Let's do that. Let's do it. Give us the lowdown and uh, what it's all about. Well, this is the Mitsubishi IMEV, um, first production electric vehicle from Mitsubishi. Um, I'm lucky enough to work for Roche, the company that has it leased from Mitsubishi. Um, with a little bit of conjoling and a nice letter, we were able to lease it, uh, lease it off of them, along with about 40 other country companies in Australia. Um, I'll give you a guided tour if you like. Please, let's go. Here we have the front of the vehicle. Really, really short bonnet. Or yep. hood for the uh, for those of the American persuasion. Absolutely. Um, wheels are right at the front, which uh, is where they, and right in the corner, which is where they should be for uh, for uh, better handling. 
coming around to the driver's door we have keyless entry excellent which is complaining no it's not gonna let us in fail oh well oh, <laughs> oh, oh well not quite okay and here's our interior let's check it out unfortunately i don't have my uh, wide angle lens so we might have to shoot it from the back actually <laughs> go ahead uh, here we have the gear selector, park, reverse, neutral, and we've got three drive positions. Drive is normal. Eco limits your maximum acceleration. Right. To and what? To uh, uh, about two thirds, I would say, of full. Right. It kind of limits limits the roll on of torque and and okay. Uh, so and therefore shoot, current. So, so you can't shoot off the line. As it's fast, no good for really. drag racing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and B, just like the Prius, gives yep. you. Uh, additional regenerative braking for going downhill. So if you're going down Got a it. steep hill, slip it into B, yep. and uh, you don't have to use the brakes so much, and yep. you're using that <laughs> you're using that energy for uh, to recharge the batteries. On the left, we have the fuel gauge, for want of a better word. I guess it is fuel. Yep. Um, half full at the moment, and currently in park. Uh, the keys are not in the run mode at the moment, so that's why the battery light is on. We have an economy gauge which goes from blue under regen to green uh, and fading to white with ever increasing power as you put your foot down. Right hand side we've got uh, trip meter and a bunch of things but uh, this yep. also tells us the range left. So 42 kilometers range left on the batteries. Is that fairly, have you found that to be fairly accurate or? This seems to be fairly accurate. Yeah, okay. Nobody's been brave enough to run it flat to really <laughs> test it. <laughs> right. This, so does it actually uh, work on your driving history, your driving style, or is it just pretty dumb you think? Yes, it does uh, Does work on your driving history. Right. If you drive okay. conservatively, yep. that figure goes down quite quietly. Okay. Uh, down quite slowly. If you drive aggressively, it disappears in no time. Got it. So and they have put some smarts into it. Yes, they have. <laughs> And in the middle, of course, we've got a speedo. Yep. Very, very simple display. I like it. And this is a just a multifunction. Multifunction stereo with GPS. Um, right. Unfortunately, it is not integrated into the vehicle at all. That's disappointing. I thought that would have been a given. I would have thought so too. Um, I really mm. like the power display of the Prius and also the uh, yeah. Nissan Leaf. Yep. But uh, unfortunately, they've not done that on this vehicle. It's got much. Oh, glove box space. Ah, oh, you know. Glove box space for the USB port for the stereo. Right, and it's a uh, oh, an actual USB. A yes, it's got hop. a real USB. It has got a real, real USB connection. In fact, I've been playing music off of my phone. Fantastic. During the trip. I like it. Any other uh, electronic accessories? Has it got another USB port somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. That's it. That's it. It's a pretty simple car. It really is. Right, but it's got full air conditioning. Full air conditioning, as and you must have for an Australian. Absolutely, and uh, cup holders. Cup holders. The the uh, air conditioning just does cooling, and it heats water to circulate for the heating. Unfortunately, it doesn't use reverse cycle air conditioning. Right, like the EV1 did um, back in the 90s. Yes, that was who killed the electric car. You've got to watch it if you haven't seen it. Absolutely, it's a good watch. Next what we'll do is we'll open up the uh, fuel fuel cap release. There's two actually. Yep. One. Uh, Shoot it. Go. Ta-da. And what have we got? Ta-da. Rather unusual looking connector. Yep. It's called a J122 something. I forget what the standard is. Okay. But it's not actually fully, the standard ah. is not fully Im implemented in the vehicle. Right. Okay. And we've got a charger cable. And we've Excellent. got a charge cable. Nice. <laughs> it looks like a gardening hose. <laughs> you plug it in, turn yep. the tap on, and you're good to go. And that's just the standard um, standard single phase one, or is that the uh, multi phase? It's single phase, but 15 amp. Here oh, right. in Australia, okay. we yep. have 240 volts and 10 amps just for general general power outlets. Um, this is a 15 amp outlet. The yep. only difference here being the earth pin is slightly larger. Yep. Round the other side. Let's check it out. <laughs> this is the high current fast charge input. Oh, got it. Nice. This will uh, pump, I think, about 80 amps into the battery pack directly. 
80 amps direct from a high voltage or a low voltage source? From a DC source. Right. From yep. a DC source. So all the smarts of the charging is off board the car. Right. The car is telling the charger what to do, but the uh, but the smarts are in the in the off board charger. None of those exist in Australia yet. I look <laughs> right. forward to using one one day. Oh, you, what you mean they don't actually supply it? Come on, <laughs> they, you know, they should have a massive uh, pack that you can charge up at home and then, like you can leave it, you can leave the box charging at home and then just uh, pump it. That would be nice. Out. That would be nice. But clearly not. And expensive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now we get to the good stuff. We now, have. We. It's not. Doesn't normally look like this. We have actually removed the uh, uh, the panel here. So there's. A, is there, is there enough uh, room for? I don't know. A bunch of uh, scopes and stuff like that, or a bag of or some golf clubs. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm it. sure you can fit your golf clubs and all right. shopping in the back. Tell us all about it. In the back here, we've removed the panel from above the motor and uh, and all the good stuff. What we have starting at the left is a water reservoir for cooling fluid. That cooling fluid circulates through the charger, the inverter, the motor and I think the battery pack as well to keep everything nice and cool. Next we have the charger. That's for charging the 320 volt lithium ion battery pack. Mm -hmm. The batteries are made up of 50 amp hour cells of which there's a, from memory about 83 or so of them. Um, and next we have the inverter. This converts the 320 volts DC into three phase AC for the uh, permanent magnet AC motor that is buried down the bottom So it is actually a here. three phase AC just like your ute. It certainly is. Right. If the Australia's only three phase electric ute? First ute? and only three phase electric ute. I should say first road legal. Road there legal. There have been okay. a few others around but yep. uh, first road legal fully certified. We'll definitely have to put the links for that which will be down below the video there. Just check it out. Mao's ute or truck as they call them in the US. On the right hand side here we've got a brake vacuum pump. Um, yep. The uh, brake booster like mo all cars, most cars, needs uh, a vacuum source and that's what uh, that's what that's for. Why is that? Why, why do they need a vacuum source for the brakes? What the brake booster does... As you know I'm not very mechanically <laughs> inclined from... Mao made a comment about uh, myself and Chris on the amp hour goofing up the uh, drive <laughs> terminology for this thing. Ah oh, well. Yeah, third time lucky when he's talking about the um, the vault. It's uh, connected to the crankshaft is the correct term. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and what's this one connected to? Uh, this one, well this one doesn't have a petrol motor so there, yeah, is, there is no equivalent. Right. Um, it's of course battery only. Yep. And there is a the motor down the bottom, which is kind of hard to really see. It's sort of tucked. You can probably see it. That's it down down there somewhere, and it goes about this long, doesn't it? Yep. About, about that long. About half the width of the car there. So it's a pretty tiny motor, really. Um, through a single reduction gearbox. Right. So there's no gear changes. Zero to 130 kilometers an hour. No shifts. Which means it's quite uh, quite peppy off the lights, yep. bucket loads of torque, and no shift. So when everybody else is changing gear, you're accelerating. Awesome. And that's pretty much it. Is that all you need for? A that's all you need. Basic. Uh, it's pretty much all I had in my use as well. Batteries, charger, right. inverter, and you're good to go. And if we just have a look through the uh, wheel arch here, we can just see the motor in there, and that. Uh, Dries and there's the there's the diff. There we go. That's the motor in there. Motor to the right, diff and gearbox to your left, near the centre of the car. Yep, and there's the diff and the gearbox. Excellent. sit inside the sucker it's actually pretty uh, darn roomy it's pretty windy here today I don't know if you can hear me the boom mic uh, might be getting a little bit of wind noise today but uh, it's it's quite nice there's a decent amount of leg room in the back and it seats four nicely now seats four comfortably yep and even has child restraints child restraints <laughs> excellent tell us the specs all about it sure okay top speeds over at 130 kilometers an hour yep um, acceleration 0 to 80 if memory 
sorry, 0 to 60 miles, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, if memory serves correctly, is about 12 seconds. It's really, really talky between about 20 and 70 kilometers an hour. It's just fantastic. So you can shoot off the line, burn off the uh, V8s, burn off, off the line. Can burn have, off the sixes. Have you tried? Come on, you can own up. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, what else? Its um, weight is about uh, 1,050 kilos. Yep. The torque, uh, sorry, power is 47 kilowatts. Uh, torque escapes me, but it's pretty decent. Torque is what gives you acceleration, not power. Power gives you top speed. Um, what else can I say? Range, conservative driving is about 80, sorry, 100 kilometers. Um, normal driving about 80 kilometers. The book says 160, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> um, and uh, have, have you found that that range actually is usable around a city like Sydney? Is it? It should be, I can imagine. I mean, I, I used to work half halfway across Sydney at the company that shall not be named, <laughs> and that was 35 kilometers each way. Um, and that, so I could do that, I could do a day's worth of driving. You really could, quite comfortably. Um, with that range of 80 to 100 k's, it's a good commuter. Mm -hmm. um, depends on where you live. Sydney is not a great city for EVs because it's very large and very sprawling. Yeah. Um, but for commuting, um, if you live that 30, 40 k's from home, from work, it's fantastic. Um, as I see it at the moment, EVs are a fantastic second vehicle. If you've got... Um, if you want to go further, or go camping, or do whatever you do, you take the other car. Yeah. But uh, it's a really economic way to own a second car, and there's no servicing costs. Absolutely. Well, you'd have to. There's. You'd have to get the brakes and stuff serviced, but just the basics, like brakes that's right. and yeah, brake pads, brake pads, fluids. Yep. That's about it. That's about it. Um, they don't get changed. Oh, and because it has regenerative braking, yep. you don't use the brakes so much. Of course. So I would expect they'd probably last about thirty or forty thousand k's. Fantastic. And it's keyless entry, is it? it uh, has, I mean, it's actually keyless. It really is. Um, I've uh, got the key yep. fob in my pocket, and it's got just this little dinky thing that looks like a key Okay. to make it go. Right. So it's like a little um, a little RFID tag or something, is it? Let's yes, it is. Right here. There you go. Oh, that's, that's pretty big, actually. And you just have to keep that... A but, on your uh, person yep and it'll let you unlock the drivers or open the driver's door by pressing a button or open the boot trunk for those of the trunk, American persuasion yes. um, and it has an emergency key if you get stuck just in case just all in case. the technology <laughs> just in case the technology fails and it has a backup excellent actually where do you stick that <laughs> well there's a trick all right you ah, pull there the you little go. cover off got it and I don't think you can start it even with this but it does Oh, you've got to be able to start it, surely. Ah, it does. Yes, you can. There it you go. Does. Haven't tried it before. No, I haven't, haven't had to, thankfully. <laughs> and inside the rear seat, there's actually a decent amount of leg room. That's uh, not too bad at all. And uh, charger cables, you just keep in the back here. There we go. Not a problem. But uh, what, you just have to sit them there loose? Yeah, well, it comes with a... Oh, it's for the thick black cable. Um, they just say, say don't plug in an extension cord, but uh, in case I get stuck, I keep my caravan cord handy. Awesome. <laughs>
uh, onto the back wheels. No in-wheel motors. There's no in-wheel motors available yet, largely because the unsprung mass, that is the weight of the wheel, um, causes problems with the suspension and handling. And um, the, with a wheel motor, the mass of the motor is quite high. Um, it's not ideal. The, uh, to tell you why the mass is a problem, power is proportional to the torque times the RPM. If you want a powerful motor, you have to either increase the torque or the RPM. To increase the torque, you need a big motor. Big and heavy, bad idea. So what we do is we increase the RPM. So we have a low torque motor, high RPM, through a reduction box to the wheels, you end up with a nice light and fairly simple package. The Tesla Roadster has a very small motor. It's called, a, I believe, a based on a 112 frame. 112 right. millimeters from center of shaft to the outer circumference of the motor. Very small, very com compact, but it spins up to about 12,000 RPM. Uh, and then through a reduction box, which magnifies the, or multiplies the torque uh, and keeps the power high. Awesome. Thanks, Malcolm. Physics 101. <laughs> <laughs> Which is more than I know about cars, that's for sure. <coughs> and there it is, the Mitsubishi Innovative Electric Vehicle, the IMEV. Is that how you pronounce it? IMEV. IMEV. We well, think we've given up on the uh, trying to use the GPS thing on this. It was too hard. Anyway, let's start it up, see what it sounds like. It started. Oh, fail. <laughs> no noise at all. All right. No noise at all. Let's drive out of here. Okay, here we go. There's the lab. See ya. And there's my wall of my pine. The world's oldest tree. Here we go. That is quiet. Here we go. And we're off. And we're off. And it does have some acceleration, doesn't it? And I wasn't really trying. Oh, okay. It won't gun in it. How does it handle the chicanes? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, how's it been to drive? How many months? How long have you been driving it now? Um, I just get it off and on. It's the company's pool car. Right. Um, so, I need to book it just like anybody else. The, um, oh, I've borrowed it maybe three, four times um, whenever I'm able. It's great fun. It's um, just so different and, and neat to drive. And, uh, of course, no petrol. Um, with Absolutely. My, with my user. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't bought two petrol in two years. Um, Fantastic. It's just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's really good. It's, uh, as we mentioned before, there's uh, just a single speed gearbox, so no changes or shifts. Yep. And the acceleration is just progressive. Fantastic. And we're in the Hills District here of uh, Sydney, so we're uh, going to test it out on some uh, decent hills. But no, we've got. Oh, no, one. <laughs> sorry, I was too busy filming, not navigating. We're just testing out the turning circle, which is pretty sharp. Very sharp. Got to say. And the handling is very smooth. All of the batteries are under the floor, so the yep. centre of gravity is very low. So even though it's a little narrow car, its um, handling is like that of a much wider car. And how does it brake? stops <laughs> <laughs> more than good enough more than good enough All right. more than good enough what I can do is when we're next going down a hill yep. I'll shift the gear lever from eco to B yep. and uh, maybe you'll get a feel of what's happening from the road noise okay you'll feel that we will feel the decel we will feel it but uh, unfortunately this is not feel a vision here we go we're going we down go, down a hill yep shifting into B and we don't notice much difference. <laughs> no, afraid not, it's not that steep. The uh, little red, little uh, econo gauge is now in the charge region. Oh yes, there it is. Which shows it's regenerating. Yep. And the other way, full noise. Nice. And all of the uh, noise we're getting is just the uh, wheels, really. That's right. That's pretty That's much right. it. 
So has this got special low resistance tyres, or is it? It has actually. It has very has low resistant low rolling resistance tyres. Mm -hmm. And um, oddly enough, the front wheels are skinnier than the rear. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe they think it's mm. Formula One or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've got to say, this is quite impressive. I want one. How much are they? Well, you can't really buy them. They were available on limited release in Australia to um, selected corporate and governments. Um, I'm lucky enough to currently be working for a corporate and will be out of a job soon so I don't get to borrow it anymore. But, um, so you can't buy them. Uh, it's kind of weird. So people ask, how much are they? <laughs> there is no price. Um, Hopefully they'll come in under 50 grand. It'd be crazy if they were more, they just wouldn't sell. But yeah. people bought plasma TVs when they were $20,000, so I'm They did? People will buy these, I'm sure. Early adopters. That's right. Or suckers, as they call them. <laughs> but no, someone's got to buy them, which is great. I would, I would buy one if it, yeah, 50 grand is probably a bit too much, I think. So, um, I think I'll uh, wait for them to halve. The uh, early adopters can have them and, uh, I'll reap the rewards in five years' time, because this is the future. Well, for those mechanically inclined, you may be uh, tempted to convert one yourself. Convert a uh, petrol vehicle yourself. Yes, and if you want the details, you have a website now? Um, I have a website, a4x4kiwi.blogspot.com and also um, you might want to check out the Australian Electric Vehicle Association website, just Google it. And if you want to see loads of examples of converted vehicles, go and have a look at evalbum.com. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mel. This was fantastic. My pleasure.